Right, hello, Daniel Boala is my name. I'm glad to come your way today. What a day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm so delighted to be able to bring the word of the Lord and word of encouragement to as many people that are hearing the sound of my voice and in the hope that somebody will be encouraged to push on and to move on in life. Well, I'm glad to come your way today. I intend to handle the subject called managing disappointments in life. Managing disappointments in life. Now, disappointment is setback. Disappointment is aborted appointment. Disappointment is a situation in life where the expectation of someone is dashed. The Bible says hope defer it, make it the heart sick. In other words, anytime you face disappointment, your heart becomes sick. You become uncomfortable. You become distressful. And so disappointment is not what anybody naturally likes in life. Disappointment, medically speaking, can result in severe headache. It can even affect digestion if it becomes chronic. Maybe someone continue or reverts or result into deeper thinking of worries as a result of disappointment. Now, one thing you must know about disappointment is that nobody is above disappointment in life. Disappointment is built to be the mechanism upon which people will build creative destinies by quality decision as a result of the disappointment. When we go deeper, I will tell you more about that. But suffice to say at the beginning that everybody faces disappointment in life and you have to know that no matter how hardworking you are, no matter how assured you are, you're, no matter how assuring your activities, your work, and your project is, it may encounter disappointment on the way because disappointment is necessary in building better character and greater destinies. Now, let me tell you how to a few things about how to manage disappointment. The first one is you have to understand that disappointment is natural. Disappointment is natural. The Bible says there is no temptation that will come to you but such that is common to man. So temptation, which another word for it is disappointment, can be seen or can be viewed as common. The Bible says it is common to man. So you have to understand or you have to believe that every disappointment you face in life, whether it is a minor disappointment which results in uh, uh, schedules uh, no, no, uh, cancelled, or promotion denied, or suspension given, or even expulsion, or you not being able to pass the required grades that you need in your exams, or you not passing the promotional exams, or your expectation is cut short in the office, or in a business transaction where you expect a larger sum of money to be able to meet up with certain projects that you've given their deadlines, whatever the form, or even in a relationship, somebody just broke your heart for no reason or for a reason that you consider not justifiable. Whatever it is, disappointment can cut across the great, the small, the rich, and the poor. We all have our disappointments, and our disappointment may differ in perspective, differ also in character. But disappointment is natural. That is the first point you must know. If you have to conquer and manage disappointment, you must commonize it. You must believe that disappointment is common. However terrific it is, however painful it is, however discouraging it is, however bad you feel as a result of it, if you have to get out of that feeling and build a greater destiny, you must understand that every man in life faces disappointment and that disappointment is natural. The word of God is clear about that. The second point is, do not accept the outcome of disappointment as a finality or as the fate that you have. What I mean by fate is F-A-T-E. Do not accept the outcome of disappointment as your fate. Because some people, that's what they do. Anytime they embark on a project or they attempt something major in their lives and they face disappointment, the first thing they come to conclusion about is that they say, this is my fate or this is my destiny. There are some people who take it as God's will or God's plan for their lives. Do not accept the outcome of disappointment as a finality. Now, let me put this word. Put it this way. Another word for disappointment may be classified as failure. But don't forget that success is not final and failure is not fatal. And that secondly, failure is not failure to reach your goal. 
Failure is actually failure to reach as high as you possibly can. And like I said, I, I heard it sometimes back from a great thinker. He said, you must, you must recognize this in life, that you will not always win. But there is always a tomorrow after you have done your best to achieve success today. In other words, you will face and encounter disappointment on the road to achievement, on the road to project fulfillment, on the road to the realization and the fulfillment of your destiny. But whatever the outcome is, do not accept disappointment or setback or failure as your faith or as the finality. Don't make a major conclusion based on the disappointment you have felt or you have encountered on the path to the fulfillment of your destiny and your project in life. Number three is that you must, anytime you encounter disappointment, you must think before you make any major decision. You must think. Because the essence and the intention of the devil or whatever it is or whoever it is that set up or orchestrated the disappointment in your life is to get you to make that major decision that will negate the reality of God's plan for your life. The idea of disappointment is to bring you to a point where you either accept it as a fail or you take a decision on the contrary. The greatest temptation that you will ever encounter when you are faced up with setback or failure is to make a major decision based on that. Now, I will tell you why. Of course, when we are disappointed in life, that is when we make a decision. And life is a proof of this fact that some of the great achievements we have seen in our world today, brought to bear by men and thinkers and entrepreneurs and industrious people, we are product of disappointment. In other words, they were, they, they were disappointed in life and they decided to try something else or they decided to do some things differently and they are able to achieve the things they have achieved and today we are celebrating. There are quite a number of them. If you talk about Wright Brother, Thomas Edison, Steve Jobs, all of them, and even in our modern world today and in different parts of the world, there are some relationships that is because of disappointment people are able to take certain major steps in their lives and they are now seeing the fruit of that decision. But that decision was made because they were disappointed. I understand perfectly. But my point is, think before you make that major decision. Why is it necessary? The reason is because creative thinking is the foundation for a productive solution. If you do not think before you take that decision, you are likely to take decision based on impulse, take a spontaneous decision that will negate the reality of your plan, or your decision is likely to be in conformity with the intended plan of that disappointment. So think. And the world is looking for thinkers. We need thinkers. The Bible even makes it clear. As he thinking in the start, so is he. The role of creative thinking cannot be underestimated, overestimated, or overemphasized. It is very fundamental in life that you think before you take that major decision. If you do not think before you take decision when you encounter setback, you are likely to make a decision that will make the situation worse for you, whether in an organization, whether in project, whether in the academia, whether in relationship, whether in personal life and whether in church-based ministry or even in your political decision. Anytime you face disappointment, you have to think before you make that major decision. And then the fourth one is you have to pray about everything. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Everything, everything with prayer and thanksgiving. So prayer is fundamental when you are faced up with disappointment in life. Because there is a God. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him for he cares. Casting of the cares is taking the matters up to God in prayers. You have to pray about every disappointment and every situation that negates the reality of God's plan for your life. And when you take these steps, you're going to find yourself taking certain decisions in your life based on that disappointment that will change your life for the better. Don't forget, I said the first one, you have to accept that disappointment is natural in life. And when you accept that, you commonize it, then you can have the foundation to making a greater and a better decision. And the second one, I said, do not accept the outcome of disappointment as finality or the fate of your life. And the third one, I say, you have to think before you make a major decision. The fourth one, I say, you have to pray about everything. So take that into heart and begin to see how you can manage, manage whatever disappointment in your life. And then see how God takes you from where you are to where you're supposed to be. 
Thank you very much for taking out your time to listen to me today. When I come your way next week, I will talk more in line with destiny, in line with God's plan and purpose for your life. So you can go ahead and click the like button of our videos and share it with as many people as possible in the social media and then see how God will reach out to them and bless them. Again, thank you. And God bless you until I come your way next week. Thank you very much. Bye.